Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game two of a best of three between Eugen and Nicholas Frick. And this is round three of the Great Paradox Tourney. So previously we saw Eugen defeat Nicholas Frick with his first Pancerna division versus uh, Nicholas's 352nd on St. Merigles. So really, really well done to Eugen to pick up that first game. That means he only needs one more in order to move on to the semi-final in the Great Paradox Tourney. Nicholas is going to be needing two games in a row. And after the convincing victory that Eugen put on in the first game, it's going to be a very tough task indeed. So today we're seeing Colville, and it's going to be the 15th Infantry Scots from Eugen taking on the 21st Panzer of Nicholas. And this is a matchup that we've seen time and again throughout this tournament. So both divisions um, obviously perceived to be quite strong indeed. I know why the 15th Infantry Scots is. Obviously it's a quite diverse division. It's very hard to actually punish uh, because there's quite a lot of infantry availability. A lot of the tanks have quite high armor values. And that can be hard to deal with in, in phase A and B for the other, um, or for, well, for, for the opponent. Um, the 21st Panzer, they're very good with the addition of things like the Panzer Habitzer in Phase A and also the Brumbar that's also going to be played by Nicholas at the start here. So this combination, the Panzer Habitzer and the S307 pack is something that we've seen over and over and uh, there's a good reason for that of course. So either way in the middle here the Panzer Habits are going to be supported by a unit of Panzergrens and the command infantry there, of course. Panzergrens in the top side, Panzergrens in the bottom side, and that's going to be most of Nicholas's points spent, but we'll go back over there in a second. Over on the side of Eugen, we have a pretty standard setup. It's just going to be rifles with the command infantry there and some recon for this AT gun. Some more recon there. We also have uh, two units of rifles in the top side with another command carrier with command infantry and the two inch mortar carrier to provide uh, close range um, artillery support. Churchill 5 is going to be brought up to the center of the map. So we'll have to see if that can find itself any important targets, but a relatively short deployment there. Only a few minutes, which is uh, interesting. It seems that both players knew exactly what they wanted to do at the start of the game. And I feel like this could go either way. It really depends for Nicholas if he can get the kills onto the Churchills and the other vehicles like the, uh, the carriers. And for Eugen, it's all about whether his six pounders can find shots onto things like the Brumbar and uh, the Astro 7 pack or the Panzer Habitzer before they get killed themselves. Now this Brumbar is going to be definitely very hard to deal with. Uh, but it is very slow. So currently, as you can see, a lot of ground is being made at the start for Eugen. He's already picking up the plus one because a lot of the units out of the 21st Panzer are very slow. But the other thing to note is that look how many units the 21st Panzer has. Because a lot of their infantry is quite expensive, you have a lot less of it. And that can be hard to deal with. So the infantry unloading here, we have the MG carrier coming up, the six pounder there, rifle leader making that a two star six pounder. And if that's kept on return fire, could find a cheeky kill onto the S307 pack. So currently with this uh, front line being pushed in here, I'm surprised not to see Eugen try and run across the open here with some rifles because he does have three squads there. So sacrificing one to maybe make a little bit of ground might have been worth it. But anyway, we are finally seeing an engagement in the center. Churchill 5 going to be opening up onto the Panzergrenfuhrer. And taking that out early on will make this uh, Panzerhabitzer much less accurate. Which is actually a big problem because you want this Panzerhabitzer to be able to hit with its 4 accuracy onto the Churchill 5 and possibly find itself a penetration there. But at the moment, 51% for Eugen. We have SBW-221s coming in with recon to provide some information for Nicholas on the top and bottom side. 
There's also a reinforcing uh, command infantry coming into the top side. I'm assuming that's to try and level things out between the infantry there, make those Panzergrens that have no veterancy a little bit better at dealing with rifles. But currently, the 50-50 has been found. Nicholas stopping that with the U-304 there. Very nice indeed. This six-pounder going to be firing onto the U-304. Now, one thing that will be quite frustrating here for Nicholas is that this S-307 pack doesn't have HE. So even though it has the 1,200 meter range, it can't actually fire back at something like a six-pounder from out of range. And currently, Eugen's trying to move that forwards. Rifles now engaging Panzer Grenadiers in the open. But generally, there's not actually too much going on. We haven't seen any significant engagement. I'm pretty sure that U-304 was the first casualty of this game. So a long way to go. Nicholas really wants to find the kill onto this Churchill, I would expect. And also possibly onto these Universal Carriers. Because that could open up the middle of the map quite a lot. Because currently, these two Universal Carriers are the only thing holding this front line forwards in the middle of the map. So the Churchill 5, that's rolling down to the bottom side. I'm assuming Eugen's looking for line of sight onto these Panzergrens to try and take those out. S307 pack currently moving back to the road. Might end up fast moving to the center where it can join the Panzerhabitzer in trying to take out these carriers. It's just got to find its accuracy though. The Panzergrens feel pretty far back at the moment. Yeah, I feel like they could be accompanying the Panzerhabitzer. This was actually something that somebody said to me recently. I put up a gameplay with the 21st Panzer and uh, somebody stated like, how I was complaining about the accuracy of the Panzerhabitzer with the AP. Why not just use the command with it? Exactly. And um, either way, 257 going to be coming in here. That's going to be trying to mortar the rifles. So in order to supplement the S307 pack not having HE, Nicholas has decided to bring in the 257, which is a very good idea indeed. Six pounder, however, has been brought down to the center of the map. And that is now going to be engaging these U-304s, which are in a pretty sticky spot right now. And uh, currently, what's quite annoying here for Nicholas, he can fire position with the with the Panzer Habitzer, but it's not going to be direct line of sight, which is kind of hard to deal with. Because now, this six-pounder, unless it gets pinned down, can quite simply roll back to the other side of the tree line here, and then move down the tree line a bit and unload again. Universal Carrier going to be opening up onto the 221. Six Pounder has found its way to the other side of that tree line and will most likely find the kill very shortly if the honey does not. So that 221 going to be falling back. It's turning on the spot, giving plenty of time for the Six Pounder to line up again. Engine destroyed. That is a dead recon car right there. So the Panzer Habits are still firing away. Going to be helping to pin down the six pounder. 257 currently going for the shots onto Eugen's units on the bottom side. Can he actually see what he's firing at though? No, he cannot. This Alfgrader, I think the line of sight's broken onto this tree line. So he can't see the six pounder. Probably guessing at the moment with that, forcing Eugen to fall back. Now the Brumbar is arriving here. That's going to be getting into position to take on some of these rifles. The rifles did make it across the open here into the orchard. But all the while, another mortar carrier going to be arting the six-pounder and the infantry. This needs to be microed a bit better, though, because he doesn't want this these rifles to run too far forwards like they are. He definitely wants to start pinning these down so that his Brumba has plenty of time to kill those off or force the fallback from Eugen. So more reinforcements being brought up here, new Panzergrens. Panzer 35S coming to the center of the map, but this six pound is still alive and that I feel like that's gonna end up catching out Nicholas Frick because that's something that always happens in Steel Division, at least to me. 
you get a six pounder or a 17 pounder down to two or one health the same can happen to like pack 40s and stuff and they always come back to bite you you think you're dealt with them and then when they're just like the one man left just determined to kill your vehicles and it always happens so here the six pounder is currently recovering and it only needs one shot to penetrate a Panzerhabitzer. Like it's got 11 AP versus 4 armor. So it should do the job. We do have a, an engagement here. The Honey taking on the Panzer 35. Now the Panzer 35 has the armor advantage in this engagement. However, it's currently suffering a little bit of a, of a morale problem there. Due to its veterancy being lower. Looks like Eugen has that micro properly so that the honey does not fall back unnecessarily. It's quite a nice idea actually there from Nicholas Frick to try and damage the morale of the honey in that engagement. Instead going to be uh, trying to smoke off the Panzer 35 to avoid side shots in the future. U304 in the mid goes down to this 6 pounder I would assume unless it was uh, this one in the centre. But Panzergrens are in a pretty good position there. The main issue at the moment is that uh, Eugen currently has the plus one. Really nice uh, five position coming down from the Panzerhabitzer. That's going to be uh, stopping this six pounder from doing too much. But Spitfire Mark 9, that's going to be trying to strafe the Panzerhabitzer. Six pounder still found a kill onto the U304 there. Very nice. Two, two, two. Going to be dying in the top here. Six pounder found its way into the tree line. U304 going to be surrendering some rifles there. Very nice indeed. I just feel like this mortar has too much work to do though. And uh, the honey there alongside the 6 pounder, are going to be taking out the U304. But yeah, this this needs to be microed as best as possible. Like You need to be finding the shot onto the 6 pounder, onto any infantry engagement between your infantry. That's where the mortar needs to be firing. Panzer 35 sneaking forwards, going for the engagement again with the honey. Can he get the kill? It's going to take a little while, I expect. 257, trying to help out in that scenario. The uh, Panzer bits are now firing at these rifles in the open. And I think what Nicholas really needs is maybe an infantry squad on this bottom side to try and make some ground. Oh, that's not good. The Panzer Habits have got taken out, I'm assuming, by this six pounder. Must have been in range. And it found the kill. That is devastating. That is horrible. Because that's a Panzer Habits that was really in a perfect position. And having it taken out like that really makes things difficult. Because now the six pounder can quite simply roll forwards and deal more damage to units reinforcing down the center of the map. In the top side, we are seeing this honey rip to shreds the Panzer Grenadiers with the help of the rifles. That's working out very nice as well. Strong fire support here from Eugen, using these honeys very well indeed. Engagement continuing between the honey and the Panzer 35. That could go on forever because this Panzer 35 doesn't have much accuracy and this honey is actually very unlikely to penetrate a Panzer. So <laughs> that's kind of where things are. So this Panzergren squad now is almost completely unsupported due to the Panzerhabitzer being killed. But might be able to find some decent damage onto the 6 pounder before they eventually get surrendered to the scouts or even killed off. Because the scouts at close range do have quite a nice amount of HE. So that's what you can see happening here. Panzergren is now down to a two man squad. Eventually going to be killed off. Taking down the, the 6 pounder to 2 health is, is really good. SG07 pack looking for the shot onto the Churchill 5. That's exactly what he wants to be doing here. That's what you bring in the SG07 pack to do in this matchup. Now, U304 flak coming in. Not often you see those, actually. That's the 20 mil on the back of the U304. Marder 1 also joining the party. But he doesn't want to lose this Marder 1 the same way that he lost the Panzer Habit. So he's going to be a bit careful about where he places that. So as usual, we should probably talk about how Nicholas Frick can come back in this game. Well, for me, it's personally down to his mortars. And in this top side where Eugen's pushing quite hard, I would like to see this 257 move up there and support that. Where 
the infantry engagement is a lot more predictable because what you can do then if you have double mortar is avoid this counter battery from Eugen and just start hammering the rifles in this location moving forwards your Panzergrens all the while. You're then going to have to support that with an AT gun but it looks like Nicholas here going to be relying on the Mardis which is fine. Just got to make sure that they engage out of range of the honeys which is easier said than done in that kind of terrain. Marda has found line of sight though. Honey not though Eugen not gonna let that happen. And one thing we did just see here is the six pounder took out the 257 while I was talking about it. So that is absolutely devastating for Nicholas Frick's chances on that top side. Now I would definitely expect this one on the bottom side that's not really doing too much to head up that way. Uh, the other issue here is that uh, this 257 is actually pretty damn low on ammunition and spending another 50 to bring in an Opa Blitz is a big deal. Now the 17 pounder did find the kill onto the S307 pack before the smoke could come down from the 257. And that's mainly thanks to this being a 3 star 17 pounder so it wasn't really going to miss. Um, but yeah again another devastating loss for Nicholas. That's going to allow this Churchill to be very aggressive now with the infantry on this bottom side. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Eugen make even more ground now. Marder 1 going to be finding a kill in the centre of the map, which is very nice indeed. But with the rifles and AT guns in position now, this Marder 1 is not going to be affecting too much by finding those kills. The Marder 1 firing, firing across to these rifles. Now going to be engaging the Churchill 5 here. Definitely has enough AP to penetrate. And it seems as though Eugen knows it. Lucky to bounce that shot. Six pounder has rolled into this tree line. Got plenty of time to kill that Marda. And that's exactly what's going to happen. With the Churchill firing the shot. The HE shell. And it landing next to that Marda. It pinned it down just enough for the six pounder to easily do the job there. 2 2 1 now trying to rush down the centre of the map but is likely to be picked off by this 6-pounder. Churchill 7 now moving up. We also see the Marda die in the top side. And with that occurring, Nicholas Frick is going to surrender. And after 14 minutes and 55 seconds, Eugen is victorious. Will be moving on to the semi-finals of the Great Paradox Tourney. So congratulations there to Eugen securing his place with an absolutely fantastic KD, 1,110 kills to 50 losses, proving why he deserves to be in the semi-finals. Uh, fantastic job, Eugen. Really, really nice indeed. So, we'll have to wait and see who his opponent's going to be in that semi-final as I move on with the other best of threes in round three of the Great Paradox Tourney. But uh, pretty cut and dry. These six pounders really doing work. That six pounder did find the kill onto the Brumba. That is really, really bad for Nicholas at the start of the game. It also found the kill onto the 257 and finally the Marder later on there. Honey did find the kill onto the Panzer 35. Six pounder in the mid killed off the Panzer 38, 39H. And um, yeah, I think just in general, Nicholas didn't make his expensive units early in the game pay off enough as the game continued and it really showed like I was saying before at the start of the game why the 15th infantry Scots is very like easy to play and very effective it's because it's very hard to punish however with the 21st panzer you have very strong units but they are easier to punish and we saw that happen here with the low armor on the S07 pack the low armor on the panzer habitzer and uh, the Brumbar just being too slow to get itself out of a position where a six pounder could kill it. And that's exactly what happened, most likely in the top side. And I don't think we actually saw that occur, but still, that's most likely the thing that happened. Now, in terms of losses, it was just the Marder 1 picking up a universal carrier, Panzer 35 taking out a command carrier, and one squad of rifles dying throughout that entire game. Fantastic job by Eugen securing that victory. And that's going to be it. Yep, Eugen's going to be moving on to the semi finals. 
well deserved. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.